Hi, this is Dr. Darwin, the new dentist coach, with another episode of Ask Dr. Darwin on the New Dentist Podcast Show, where you ask questions about getting into dental school, surviving dental school, getting into residency and surviving residency, and then life as a new dentist, either as uh, someone who's coming in to the U.S. wanting to practice. We get a lot of uh, questions and a lot of dialogue about that, or just life after residency, life after dental school. Be sure to check out my, my YouTube channel, Dr. Darwin Speaks, as I will be posting videos on a weekly basis, Mondays, like today, Tuesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and even over the weekends. I don't want you guys to miss the content. We've been helping a lot of people get some questions uh, answered about this career in dentistry. Today, we're going to be continuing uh, my series, Careers in Dentistry. We have a, a guest, Dr. Paula Coates is going to be talking to us about how to become a national leader, how to become a national leader in organized dentistry. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Dr. Parla, hi, how are you? Good morning, Dr. Darwin. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Just want to say, you know, before we get started, so very proud of you. Uh, you know, over the years, I, I've just realized that we have a lot of connections, both from uh, childhood, undergrad, dental school, and everything else. So. Uh, when I, when I heard about your most recent accomplishment, uh, I thought it was even more fitting for us to, to, to connect and also share your story as a, as a national leader in organized dentistry. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, thank you first for having me on this Labor Day. Um, my name for everyone, my name is Dr. Paula Coates, as stated. Um, I am originally from the Washington, D.C. area. I grew up in Prince George's County, Maryland, PG. Um, and I attended um, Duke University. For undergrad and that's where we have our ACC connection that's right <laughs> and then um, I took two years off and I applied and I got accepted into Meharry Medical College School of Dentistry I have to represent them today and I finished there in 2000 and then got accepted into the residency program in pediatric dentistry at the University of Illinois in Chicago um, I completed that um, program in 2002 and I decided to relocate to Atlanta, Georgia, where I practiced for um, 10 years. And during that time, I also became boarded with the American Board of Pediatric Dentistry. And um, around 2013, I wanted a little change, decided to go back to Meharry and teach um, in the, with the pre-doctoral students. And that was a great experience. I um, got to meet a lot of wonderful um, young people, some of which now are pediatric dentists or in residency. So really proud about that. Right. And then, um, like most of us have challenges with our parents and stuff, you know, my parents getting older and aging, I decided to return back to the D.C. area after 20 some odd years. And so now I'm currently in Northern Virginia um, practicing and here I am. So and the reason why you're, you're having me here, um, I was um, nominated and elected to serve on the board of trustees for the American Academy of Pediatric Dentistry or what we call AAPD back in 2016, and I am finishing up my last year, it's a three-year position, um, as a member of the board, so that's... Wow, <laughs> that's big, right. that's big, that's big. Not only is, is that big uh, as it relates to, you know, the Academy of Pediatric Dentistry, but it's big because I, I think this is the first time they've had someone look like you on that board. Absolutely, um, I'm actually the first black female, African-American female, um, first African-American was Dr. Clifton Dummett Jr. Um, back in the 90s. Um, so I'm the first woman of color, African-American, persuade. They've had um, some other women of color, but other nationalities, but I am the first black female. Serving on. Wow. Wow. So, so let's, let's talk about organized dentistry. What, 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 when did you really start getting involved in it? Um, I, <laughs> funny you might ask. I think when I first got started was, or interested was at, at the SNDA meeting in Orlando that we were talking about. Um, I decided to take a stab at running for a position. I wasn't successful, um, but that I was drawn in then when I was a dental student and wanted to get involved. And eventually by my senior year, I had gotten appointed to the executive board um, at that time in 1999. Um, and it pretty much just stuck with me. I mean, went to residency, but then after I graduated and I, and I moved to Atlanta, I immediately got involved in the local National Dental Association chapter and 
all of that um, went from like one position all the way up to president. And during that time, um, I became very interested in seeking opportunities within the American Academy of Peace. So that's pretty much where it started. Um, as far as my involvement with the AAPD, um, that started, I wanna say 2006, when they sent out, um, they were advertising a leadership institute, which was a new concept, and I applied. And I got accepted, and that's how it started. That opened up the door for me. So that's pretty cool. Now, was that a leadership institute? Because I know the American Dental Association has one, a diversity and leadership. Yes. Um, so, they, they, so they were trying to, you know, I, I, I want to say, you know, develop something like similar to what the American Dental Association um, had. Um, it was uh, funded by Ultradent was like one of the backers as well as our foundation. And um, they, our first group, the first group started in 2004 and that was a specific group for the already established leaders. Then in 2007, they opened it up to the general population and it was in conjunction with uh, the Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern. Yes. So, um, it was 30 of us that were selected and we took um, classes over three years, four days like out of our um, year. In wow. September, in the cold, in Chicago, <laughs> going there, but it was an awesome experience. And it was through then, um, I was like the new kid on the block. When I walked in on the first day, they looked at me like I was crazy. Like, why are you here? And I was like, well, it said, if you were interested in leadership. Right. So I took advantage. And at that time, one of my classmates was my district trustee. And so from that, he called me, like, I want to say the spring of 2008 and was like, there's an opening on a council. This is how you get in. You need to accept it. I'm, I'm going to recommend you. And so that's how it started. And so I've been serving uh, within a national capacity ever since and just recently as on the board. So it was your classmate that kind of seems like kind of did some networking and kind of opened up that door as it relates to an, uh, being involved with uh, AAPD, correct? Correct, correct. Ah, see? So that's why it's always good to stay connected with folks. Absolutely. It's all, it definitely is. Because sometimes, you know, we've, we've learned it's sometimes who you know or you're there at the right time. Um, but you have to be seen. They can't, you know, pick you if you're not visible, if you're not active or busy. Um, when you're working, they obviously know that you're serious. And so they're going to, you know, consider you. So that's pretty much how the door got open. And so once, once I went in, I just stuck to it and stayed busy. And then when it was time, um, I had a mentor to nudge me to apply for an at-large. So I'm actually an at-large trustee. I don't represent a district, but I do um, represent um, the international members. That's my assignment. Um, so I didn't have to go through a district um, nomination process. I just applied and um, she felt it was time and I applied and I was nominated by the committee. I was highly surprised, but I was grateful. And yeah. so that's how, that's how um, so your role as a member of the board of trustees is what? What do you? What's your? What's your position? Your role? Okay, so my role. Um, well, the board of trustees in most organizations, you know, we we handle a lot of the financial responsibilities, um, whether we're hiring individuals, appointing individuals, um, recommending um, papers and positions um, from the academy. So um, that's the overall role. For me, um, I serve as like a conduit from the international members to um, the board um, and bring their concerns. We're also um, assigned different tasks. We're liaisons for different councils and committees. And this year I happen to be the liaison to the residence committee and the early career pediatric dentistry committee, which I'm really excited about because I'm definitely passionate about our future and young people and young pediatric dentists and future pediatric dentists. So that's, that's something um, that I've done that's what I'm doing right now. Man, that's awesome. That's awesome. So um, tell us what, what kind of, what kind of uh, training is needed beforehand or is it more or less kind of learned on the job as, like the things that you've been doing with uh, AAPD? Okay. Well, um, for me, I think, 
the Leadership Institute was an excellent um, opportunity to get like a different perspective. You're getting business school teachers, professors, law school professors. I mean, it was just um, a great exposure. As far as um, training otherwise, I would say a lot of it was hands-on. Um, when you, when you want to get involved, sometimes, you know, they're looking for people to volunteer. It, we're like 20, you know, you know that 2080 rule, like 20% of the population does all, you know, the work. So it's not a lot of people that want to volunteer. Right. So sometimes you're just going to be a newbie just walking in, going head first. And, you know, it took a lot of, you know, reaching out to individuals who had served in other positions to get advice from them. Um, things that I try to brush up on, um, parliamentary procedures by, you know, getting things like Robert's Rules of Order books for dummies or whatever, just to read up because these are things that you have to understand. Um, but definitely, you know, the Leadership Institute help um, and, and, and mentoring, you know, just reaching out to those who had served before. But it is, will face a lot of bumps in the road and you'll, you'll, fa you'll have successes too. But a lot of it, for me, I guess, looking back, I was hands-on hands just being involved uh, in, in learning. Right, right. So good. So you mentioned some things about networking and helping other, helping the international members, uh, dealing with the residents. In your opinion, what do you, what, why do you think being involved in organized dentistry is, is uh, key to success as a, as, a, as a dentist and as a dental practitioner? Well, um, in general, it, I, I really believe that it's so important for you, whether you seek leadership or not, to be involved in organized dentistry. One, um, to be a part of a group that has the resources to support you as a provider, as a professional. Um, sometimes people need to make a phone call because something, you know, something went wrong and you need to have that group of people that has your back, that can give you the resources, that can point you to individuals who can help you. Um, organized dentistry, they have opportunities for um, discounts when it comes to services, whether it's through insurances or life insurances or different things. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of benefits from being a member of the organization. Um, as far as just personally, I think um, getting involved in, in on a leadership level, it, it, it just gave me a sense of pride um, knowing that here I am, you know, representing uh, minority students or minority young professionals um, boosting your confidence and knowing that you are um, contributing something bigger than yourself um, and also you know being able to impact others whether it's the lay public that we serve or within the community of dentistry itself um, so I think that you know if you're a person who doesn't join you're pretty much out on an island on your own and it, it can be very dangerous to, to not have, to be able to call and get the help from people when, when something happens. Because let's face it, this is a litigious world. We have people out there who don't necessarily like us as dentists and people are trying to, you know, take advantage of things. And, you know, it's just good to be able to pick up a phone and say, hey, I'm a member and I need help. Or can you help me, you know, when it comes to learning how to negotiate a contract? Or can yeah. you help me when it's, you know, to look at these, uh, uh, drawings for this this office these are all kinds of things that organized dentistry can do for you so i and i so i think it is it is a key of success you know to be a part and those who want to do leadership i mean it just it's just good it's like i said networking i mean i can tell you the the opportunities that have come from being um involved and not just for me just for, for other people through me it is right. um you know and uh, a great experience Right, right. But well, that's a kind of segue into the next question I had, which was, what, what do you think is the, what's the best part of your leadership role that you've kind of taken away? Okay. Uh, best part. Okay, well, I think, um, considering the significance <laughs> of my role, um, it has, I don't see it as, it's not all about me. It's mm -hmm. about um, me sort of, you know, cracking the ceiling I don't think we bust through but making cracks in the ceiling you know for other individuals who look like me who look like you um, um, who can be involved um, I don't think 
and, and after getting to know a lot of people on the board, I don't think necessarily it was because um, people were just like, you know, holding us back. It's just that, you know, a lot of times it's, it's exposure. Some, some individuals, they may not have ever worked with people that look like me. So by me being on the board, they're able to see that, hey, I, I, I'm not different than you. You know, we have the same goals. We went to school. We're both all intelligent. So I think if, if, if it's opening doors for future um, female, future individuals of color to come behind me, then that's great. Um, it also has given me the opportunity to recommend um, people um, for positions, trying to get them involved on national committees and councils like that. I've had um, a few successes, which I'm proud of, you know, people that I've recommended that otherwise would not have been considered. So um, that's something that um, I know um, it's also helped when it comes to like some of my former students or people that I've interacted with because some of these individuals within leadership, they happen to have faculty positions or they're, you know, so I have somehow picked up the phone sometimes. And, and, and a lot of times that's, that's what it is. It is based on, like you said, the networking, the connection. So, you know, that's, that's what I, I, I'm very um, proud of, you know, being in this role of how I can help others. Right. Yeah. That's so, that's so key. Yeah. Paving the way for others as they have paved the way for you, right? Absolutely. So you've been in this position. You said it's a three-year position. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I started in 2016. So 2016. I off in May of 2019. I'm so sad, <laughs> <laughs> but I will be back. I, I was getting ready to say, you know, with you being a, at an at-large position, that means I'm sure there's other That's types right. of uh, positions within the organization. That's too. right. So be yeah. on the lookout. Yeah, but I'm going to stay, stay busy, um, and we'll see. Good, 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 good. So, so being, being that this is your last year of the three years of your term, knowing what you know now, mm -hmm. and even what you've known even before uh, taking this position, this national leadership position, knowing what you know now, what, what would you do differently if you were starting again? Okay. Well, um, for the most part, I probably... It comes more to like interacting with the other individuals. I probably would speak up more and speak out more um, to them and learning like sometimes the conversations, things get discussed during happy hour. Mm. Not necessarily in the board meeting, but during happy hour. And I'm not someone that, you know, part participates in adult beverages a lot, but I'm, you know, I'm a little on the shy side and um, just growing up, not being in those circles, I just found it a little challenging. I've gotten better at it, but I, I would be a little intimidated and not, and not understand that, wait a minute, these folks are just, you know, they're not better than me. I'm not, we're the same. I, I can go and talk to them and just not be afraid. So that's probably if, uh, if I had to do it all over again, I would not be afraid to go and, you know, in, inject myself, interject myself in a conversation with a bunch of Caucasian men. Like now, I have no issue with that. Right. And I'm and I'm saying this, and I don't know, like you know, what your uh, follower, the makeup of your uh, your following, um, their ethnicity. But I know for a fact, as a woman of color, you know, at first it was very intimidating. You have all these white men. Right. Around, and it was hard to you know to go and talk about stuff. But now, now I'm fine. But if I had to do it all over again, I wouldn't have, you know, you know, shied away. Right. Well, that's why, that's why diversity in all areas, especially in dentistry, is so important because, you know, just as much as you listen uh, to, to their comments, they need to listen to your comments. Absolutely. You know? They need to hear your voice. And that's what makes the profession better and all aspects of it better also. So, you know, um, maybe sound, it sounds like maybe being more approachable or open to um, opening up yourself to uh, diverse backgrounds of, of others as well. Yes, absolutely. So. Cool. Okay. That's a, that's a good one. Uh, any advice? What, do, what advice do you have for, um, uh, for, for new dentists or actually pre-dentals or people that are pursuing a career in dentistry uh, and, or maybe, maybe are interested in uh, leadership roles in dentistry? What advice do you have for them? 
Um, well, I definitely would um, say that one, be a member, pay your dues, mm -hmm. get involved. And if you if you express a desire to get involved, um, you know, speak to the leadership and volunteer. Um, it doesn't matter, you know, what role it is, um, how small the position it might appear. Get involved, stay busy, stay humble. Every task that you do, you're going to put it down on your CV, your resume. It counts. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to time that you feel that you want to be a part of a leadership process, you know, you have all that to refer to and all those experiences. And then if something comes along, like if you're in, in an organization and you and they have a leadership type institute, apply, take advantage. Um, even if there's a little cost involved, trust me, it's, it's, it's worth the investment um, of your time and your treasure and your talent, and it will, it will carry you. But definitely, I would say, you know, remain busy, remain positive, um, make their connections, collaborate, because it all counts, and it will all um, make you the better for it, I strongly believe. Awesome. Awesome. So what are you working on? You have any projects that you're working on currently, either in conjunction with AAPD or just some personal projects, professional projects? Um, well, as, um, as I stated, like this year, um, I am um, the liaison for the early career pediatric dentist and the residence committee. So I am, um, you know, giving them uh, guidance and, and, and working with them as they, you know, have to um, do their tasks on, um, their charges that they've been assigned. Um, I also serve on as a consultant to the Council of Membership and Membership Services, so I'm, I'm constantly working on that, and the Committee on Interprofessional Relations. So I stay busy within the academy, even though I'm on the board. I have other responsibilities. Um, as far as uh, future, um, once I rotate off, I once again plan to stay busy. Um, I'm, I did not um, get involved too much on my district level. So I think that uh, I'm going to try to get involved more and have a more visible presence. And then, like I said, just keep my nose to the grind and, and just represent and um, just work pretty much. That's, that's staying busy and being positive about it. That's good. That's good. Maybe, maybe we'll see a future run for president. Maybe. I mean, I, I'm definitely, um, yeah. That, I'm not ruling that out. So I have to pay my dues and continue to work and stay busy, stay relevant. And yep. yes. So yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> so you guys will, will hear. Don't, don't, yes. don't, don't worry about that. Yes. Yeah. That's great. Uh -huh. what's, the, what's the best way for people to contact you if they have questions, maybe, you know, if they're interested in pediatric dentistry, which we'll do uh, another episode where we can talk about your pediatric dentistry uh, development in your training okay. on the pediatric dentistry. But in the meantime, if people want to contact you, what's the best way? Um, probably the best way is email. Uh, my email address is plcoats2003 at yahoo.com. So that's P-L-C-O-A-T-E-S 2003, 2003 at yahoo.com. Or you could reach out to me via Instagram and that's plcoats DDSMS. That's on Instagram. Okay. PL Coach DDSMS mm -hmm. on, on IG. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And I do, I do check my emails. I do respond. I do. I'm always on Instagram probably too much at times. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so they could e easily reach me there. Yeah. But there's a lot of people on, on, uh, on Instagram. A lot of ways to network with exactly. new dentists, new pediatric dentists, people, or even dentists that are, are looking for leadership roles or trying to figure it out. Um, so, I mean, there's over, I think there's over 1.2 billion users. It may even be wow. more than that, daily users on Instagram. So yes. that's a good place to be, <laughs> to network and, and, and help and reach out and, and connect with people. But, uh, but hey, I'm so glad that you took the time today and you were here with us to share uh, your, your journey and, and as a national leader in organized dentistry. Thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Awesome. Thank you for having me. You're awesome. welcome. You're welcome. And if you guys out there <clears throat> have some questions that you want us to answer or you have some, some content that you want us to uh, present, be sure to send me an email right here at newdentistcoach 
Let me slide it over here. NewDentistCoach at gmail.com. Be sure to check out the next video right, right there. It's coming up right there, all right? Take care, guys. Thanks so much, Dr. Coach. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you. Bye. Bye.